guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori. Oh, it's Wellington. Hims wants dinner. We are going to make zucchini fritters. This is a keto friendly zucchini product. Cause guys, my light's flickering. It's farm stand season and I got some fresh zucchini. I was gonna make a uh, fried zucchini, but I decided fritters sounded good. So what I'm gonna do is turn you around. I'm gonna walk you through the steps and I'm gonna feed the cats. All right, give me a second. Okay, I got the boys their dinner. What I did is I removed this end of the zucchini and I took my grater and I grated it into it. Now I only need one zucchini because it's just me. I am dropping it into a colander with a tea towel. Tea towels aren't, uh, they don't have lint like a hand towel would. They're pretty smooth. I have it folded over double, and I think they're bread cloths, tea towels. I get them at this at the Dollar Tree. But what I'm trying to do is get all this moisture out. Just like you would if you were making like zucchini bread. Um, zucchinis, like other vegetables, there's a lot of moisture in them. And I'm just trying to get some of that out. If you don't have a, t a towel or cheesecloth, just squeeze it with your hands. That's fine. But I have it. So let's see if we can't get some of this out. And I think we got a fair amount. See, now it's more dry, which is what we want. The moisture just keeps it from crisping up. And I don't have like flour and stuff to absorb the moisture. Although you can use coconut flour for this. I am not. So this is the way we're gonna roll. So step one is complete. Step two is to make our mixture and then get it into the skillet. That simple. Okay, step two. We have our zucchini here. This is one zucchini's worth. Now, I can't really give you too many measurements because it really just depends on how much zucchini and what your flavor profile is. But I'm gonna do, I have my zesty Italian that I make. You can just use garlic onion seasoning whatever seasoning you want some people put onion in it but that just brings more moisture so i'm gonna do a teaspoon and a half of my italian seasoning right because we want that to make everything tasty and i won't put salt in it because it already that has salt and if i feel like it needs more i'll salt it when it comes out some fresh ground pepper. And then I have a mixture. I'm gonna put a couple tablespoons. And this is almond flour and just Parmesan cheese. So we don't want too, too much. So a couple, for now, a couple heaping tablespoons, right? We're gonna do one or two eggs. I'll see how moist it is with one. Here's the issue with farm fresh eggs. They're delicious. They're just not very consistent in size. Look at that difference. So we're gonna use this giant one and see how that fares. And if I need to, I have a small one here. So I try to crack them into a bowl, avoid shells, and in this case, maybe any like grossness, it might be in there. And then mozzarella cheese. The mozzarella is really gonna be what is your binder in this. And like I said, if you don't wanna squeeze out your zucchini, you can put a couple tablespoons of um, coconut flour, or a tablespoon, I would say, for one zucchini. And it will help absorb any liquids that these let loose. But I don't have a lot of liquid because I squeezed mine out. I think a little more mozzarella can never have too much, right? And possibly one more tablespoon of the, there. So that's three tablespoons of mozzarella or Parmesan and almond flour mixture. It's about equal parts. And mozzarella cheese. And a teaspoon and a half of Italian seasoning or any seasonings that you like or no seasonings. I'm just whipping this up real quick with a fork. 
easier than trying to you know mix it up once it's in here and then we're going to stir this up and see how moist it is the egg is going to help bind it as well and that looks pretty good to me it's not oh it's not overly like sloppy wet and it's not super dry see if it'll hold together yeah I think that is a good combination now I need to bring a pan with some olive oil or avocado oil I wouldn't recommend butter for this um, butter doesn't have a very good high burn point and it may end up burning on you and then and I'm also gonna get a scoop to portion these out so let's see what we can get together all right now, I brought my pan up to temperature, but because I hadn't done it right away, I just put the mixture in like a sieve, just a you know, like silicone sieve, to allow it uh, to drip, because zucchini will always render liquids. And again, I want this as dry as possible. I have a three ounce portioning scoop. I use that for cupcakes. I'm gonna put it in here, and then I'm going to spread it out. So I kind of want everybody to be the same um, thickness. Now, if you don't have a measure, don't worry about it. Just use two spoons. Not a big deal, but I have one, so why not try to make everybody a little uniform? So it looks like I'll get about six fritters, and then I just, you know, I want to make it fussy. Oh, and in my, I used avocado oil. You can use olive oil, vegetable oil, whatever oil you have. But I had avocado, so I'm using that. I added a little bacon rendering just for some flavor. So now what I'm going to do is just let it fry up on one side. I'm assuming you could do this in an air fryer too. I just don't know how it handles the wet stuff. I don't have an air fryer, so I can't answer that for you. But I wonder, I'm sure you can bake it at like 425 degrees. Um, and then flip it halfway through. So right now, I'm just gonna let this come up to temperature, crisp the one side, we're gonna cook the egg and melt the cheese, and then we're gonna flip it and crisp the other side. It's gonna take a few minutes on each side. And I'm gonna stay here and watch it because I don't want it spreading out too much. That's some of the mozzarella trying to escape on me. Don't worry, I got it. It doesn't matter if it does. It's cheese, guys. Cheese is good no matter how you cook it. All right, well, let's let these brown up on this side, and then we will flip them over. Now I'm getting ready to flip them. They do stick a little to the bottom of the pan. Um, I think that's partly the mozzarella cheese that I add. But if you just, like, I just kept going like this and kind of moving them around. Ooh. And they're soft. Um, maybe if you even wanted to, you could put a lid on the pan and that might firm them up a little more, but I think they're okay. That's, I, I may flip them back one more, let them get a little more crunchy or crisp. They've been on here for about five minutes, but you know, your mileage is going to weigh vary depending on how long you, how moist your batter is. How there's that word again, everybody loves moist. Um, ooh. So we're just going to kind of flip it and then let it do its thing on this side. And maybe my second batch will go better. It's like pancakes, although they look delicious to me. I will certainly eat them. And then we can make a lemon aioli, which is like a mayonnaise, salt, pepper, garlic, and lemon juice. That would be delicious on even like a salmon fritter. We should make those one night too. See, I haven't had those in a long time. Although, when I was growing up, my mom would make us salmon patties and she used canned salmon and crushed up Ritz crackers for the binding. They were good, we loved them. Even me, who I don't really even like salmon as an adult, I eat it because I know it's good for me, but I don't care for it. I make it overly cooked to kind of cook the fishy taste. If we're being honest, I'm not a huge fish fan, but it is good for me. All right, we're going to let these cook up and firm up on this side, and then we'll put the, I'll put the next batch in and show you when they're done. 
Oh, guys, look at that. I ended up making the little lemon aioli. It's mayonnaise, a little bit of lemon juice. I put some garlic, salt, and pepper in it. These are so good. I highly recommend. And I hope you enjoy.